its soldiers to go to war, that the decisions on the use of military technology should be, led to the mil should be left to the military commanders. It's up to the president to decide to go to war. It's up to our military commanders who have experience and know the terrain and the people on the ground that are going to fight that war to be able to dictate where that technology is used. So I guess I oppose a civilian president, although he's not a civilian, I know he's the commander in chief, but when the war should be left to the soldiers on the ground. Um, I guess that's really my his, my perspective, I guess. Um, but um, I can answer questions, I guess, when the time comes. But just understand that I'm not pro-war. I'm not. I mean, if anybody is for war, please introduce yourself, because even though I'm a soldier, I'm not really for war. But I did serve my country, and I'm proud of my service. And you know, that's kind of my perspective, I guess. So thanks for letting me speak to you guys, and I'm going to sit down and let everybody else talk. Thank you. Okay, we have our second to the last speaker now. They may want to flip a coin, it looks like. <laughs> Please reintroduce yourself and I'll let you know when you have two minutes left. Again, nice and full and hopefully not too sleepy, right? I have a PowerPoint that I want to show you. Hopefully the technology here will work. Uh, nobody is being targeted here. <laughs> Appreciate all the other speakers who have gone before and shared their insights and thoughts in regards to this. Ah, is this a real drone or a simulation? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Good. All right. Um, just a few thoughts. Um, while I am in the field of international law, uh, drones have not been a special area of focus for me, and so I will. I will let you know that up front. Uh, I did have the opportunity to comment uh, when there was a University of Virginia professor who was speaking on drones and I was asked to comment with respect to his talk. Uh, the preparation I did for that and the preparation I did for this talk have been my only opportunities to be able to become more familiar and better educated myself with respect to this issue. And so I'm still in the process of thinking through it and um, I'm looking forward to all the continued interactions in regards to this. So I'm going to raise these as some of the possible issues with respect to drones. Um, there are general principles of international law that likely require some form of due process for targeted killings. Uh, that is obviously not afforded to somebody who is being targeted by a drone. Uh, they are not brought before a court of law and uh, given some sort of due process and that is something that general principles of international law could raise as an issue. International law has uh, at various times in various ways prohibited usage of particular classes and types of weapons. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with that, but take for example uh, treaties against chemical weapons or biological weapons or treaties against nuclear weapons uh, or even treaties that uh, deal with things like say exploding bullets or poison or various other forms of weapons. And so I think a good question to ask with respect to drones, is there something about drones that is analogous or similar to the types of weapons that have been uh, justifiably prohibited? And if the answer to that is yes, then I think it goes in the direction against usage of drugs. Um, there are command and control issues potentially. Uh, this can be viewed as an extrajudicial execution from thousands of miles away. Uh, and there's been talk about 
uh, the so-called PlayStation effect, the, whether this is like a video game for the one who is controlling the drone. Um, the potential effect of that is that it could have more of a dehumanizing sort of effect that when you're playing PlayStation and you're playing a war game and you're blowing away the video people on there, um, there's usually a sense of detachment. These are not really people. These are just things on a screen that I am doing in my imagination. Well, these are actually real people, right? Uh, this is not a game. And uh, is there a sense in which drones can make more of a PlayStation effect so that there can be more of a sense of detachment or dehumanizing of the people who are targeted? There are targeting issues potentially, troubles with evidence gathering on the ground. When do they cease becoming targets? Mm -hmm. uh, although we heard from an earlier panelist, this is a very small percentage uh, and very small number as of yet. I think some of the concerns are in regards to potential future usage in regards to U United States citizens. Uh, there have been very few incidents from uh, what uh, we can gather thus far, but is there the potential for greater usage against United States citizens? And if so, then the constitutional rights that would attach uh, under the United States Constitution then become uh, an issue in terms of uh, whether you're talking about due process rights or other rights that are expressed in our Constitution. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Oh, wait, is that... Oh, did you go to the next slide, Roy? No, it's that finished. Um, okay, so this is the next slide? Okay. Yeah, this is, I guess, a, an example, a picture of, um, of drones being operated. There is a question of protecting innocent human lives targeted by terrorists versus protecting civilians on the ground. One of the fundamental principles of international human, humanitarian law, the law of war, is that you distinguish between civilians and combatants, uh, those who are actually soldiers in the war and those who are civilians. And there is a prohibition with respect to the targeting of civilians. And so that is one of the fundamental tenets of international humanitarian law. And to the extent that you have civilians being targeted, that uh, would seem to be a violation thereof. Um, there are a few citizens, such as the probably the best publicized case was the case of Anwar al Awaki, that happened to be one of the examples used um, with respect to the uh, talk that the University of Virginia professor had given that I commented on. Uh, questions of executive and or judicial accountability and review for the CIA, which is not part of the military. Uh, that is, any CIA agents pulling the trigger are unlawful combatants under international law and are not trained in such law that's another concern and objection that has been raised. Um, these types of drone strikes may be used potentially against us, right? If other countries develop that technology, uh, if this is considered permitted warfare for us to use, then it would, uh, if that were to be applied consistently, it could potentially be used uh, against us as well. And it could be justified on similar grounds uh, that we have employed in regards to it. Um, uh, Harold Coe is a former associate secretary of state and also heads up uh, what is called L uh, for the State Department, which is basically the legal part of the U.S. State Department, and he heads that up and uh, and he's indicated that. It could be used as self-defense or as a legitimate method of warfare. Um, if things are, thank you, if uh, things, 
the, the potential for greater domestic use is possible, um, is not been used extensively as of yet, but is a possibility. Uh, as mentioned before, targeting potential use domestically within within the United States. Uh, and as mentioned before, targeting civilians is illegal under international humanitarian law. Um, there are different dynamics in surrendering to a drone. Uh, my interlocutor from the University of Virginia claimed that it is possible to surrender to a drone. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure exactly how all that works, uh, but he was saying that you could kind of lift your hands in front of a drone and surrender to a drone. Uh, I don't know how you would be captured or what would happen upon surrender, but uh, it seems to raise uh, difficulties and there are, do seem to be different dynamics there. Um, there's a problem of targeting individuals outside the zone of hostilities and issues of incursions upon state sovereignty. Um, assumption of civilian status unless directly taking part in hostilities. Expanding enemy combatant definition to those functionally aiding combat uh, uh, an enemy in any way uh, can be perceived as more civilian casualties and no temporal or geographic limit to drone use. Some of the prior speakers had made references to this. And again, some of the bedrock principles of international humanitarian law, proportionality, necessity, distinction, um, is this the least harmful means of taking out these suspects and do they pose an imminent threat? That has been raised as well. That is, my inclination is to prefer arrest or capture uh, over, over what seems to be targeted assassination. Uh, and there's also uh, a right to life and uh, distinction under international humanitarian law. Moving on. Um, some of the arguments that are posed in favor of drones, uh, there is the notion of there are less risks to our armed forces because the people controlling drones are sometimes thousands of miles away, um, that there could be greater ability to aim that could decrease uh, collateral damage uh, problems, but it sounds like there is some conflicting data in terms of how much collateral damage is taking place, uh, and that I think is an important question of fact of whether it's increasing or decreasing collateral damage, uh, I think is a very important question. To resolve difficult when you have uh, limitations in terms of available information and uh, some information being classified. Um, could the technology get to a point where it increases our ability to identify and, uh, and be an aid in distinguishing? Um, if so, then it could be moving in the direction towards greater distinction between combatants and civilians. Uh, but that perhaps is a, it's a technological question that I'm, I don't feel qualified to answer. And could there be less quote-unquote battle fog uh, than being on the battlefield directly? Uh, and therefore higher effectiveness and less risk of mistakes. These are some of the arguments that are used, that are mustered in favor of the usage of drones. Uh, and I want to just put those out there, given that I think most of the arguments that are being presented by the panel are on the side of being against uh, the drones, and I thought it would just be informative uh, to include these at the end of my presentation. So hopefully uh, I look forward to continue to learn and interact uh, with you all in regards to questions that you may have and listening to my fellow panelists and what you have to say as well. So thank you for your attention. Okay, we'll hear our final speaker now, and then we'll go quickly into discussion. This wasn't a contract. Look <laughs> at myself and I'm talking. Okay. Could I just use the mirror? Uh, collateral damage, that's that's a very interesting concept. I always wonder, what do they mean by collateral damage? Who invented that word? It must mean somebody in the military. Because mm -hmm. I always think of, you mean people? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, 
Ray asked me to be on this panel, and I guess it's because I admitted that I had written a poem with the, the word drones in it. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll be on the panel. I wasn't sure what the panel was about. Uh, you can tell me later. Uh, can you hear me okay?